After arriving in Iceland, Callie knew there was no time to waste. The man had made it very clear Henrik wouldn't be there for long. He needed to get a job, get some money, and get to searching the trove of information on the USB drive. But one question lingered on his mind. How was he supposed to do this on his own? Hello friends, and welcome to a new segment of Nordic Nomads. If you have been enjoying the series up to this point, drop a like, that would be fantastic. Each like is uh, one less day it takes us to find a job, and time is very much of the essence right now. Of course, with Calais touching down in Iceland, he has sort of some of his payoff money and stuff from leaving Uxholz. He's got a little bit of wages that he's built up over that time, but it was quite an expensive hotel he was staying in. So time is very much of the essence. He needs to find himself a job and fast before the money runs out and potentially before Henrik's time runs out. And that's, if anything, a more pressing concern. So of course for this, we're specifically looking for a job in Iceland. And that's not a lot of teams that are available for us to even look for for this segment. And, and that is going to be a problem that we do at least have our national sea license and a bump in reputation, which might just be enough to see Khaled land himself the chance of a lifetime. So you can see though, we are up to 10% rep, which is nice. Media handling, something I do need to look at. It's one of those things I always tend to ignore and it does actually matter in a journeyman save. So that's important with that. But tactical consistency and hands-on approach are very high. So maybe that'll work in our favor. I just don't know. Hopefully there's actually some Icelandic jobs available. I don't know though. There are in fact two jobs available. HK and Leknia Rekovic, who I have a very interesting history with in the past as it goes. Uh, both in different divisions. Now obviously HK are a top flight side, but Leknia are not. Oh, and it just makes you wonder, doesn't it? Where are they sat? So they're seeing, well, the mid-table at the moment, not looking at any real danger of relegation. It looks like the season has actually just finished in Iceland uh, as things stand. So that's probably why uh, things are a little bit funky at the moment. But they didn't get relegated, and that's the main thing. Unlike HK, who got super duper relegated in the face. Uh, so it looks like both these sides will be playing in the second tier next season anyway. And it does make you wonder if there's a chance for us there. Well, it'd be silly of us not to apply for both these jobs, wouldn't it? Literally later the same day, uh, another job has come available at Stjarnan, of course, uh, in the top flight again. And they don't look like they've been relegated, but it's worth applying. This is our lucky day. I don't know where our rank rep wise actually is. And for all we know, we're not actually good enough for any of these jobs. I think we might just about be Maybe, but I think Stjarnan would be a push. This is the first time in your career that you've handed in your resignation. How are you handling things? Victor, well, I'll have to tell you, I think you're wrong because I'm fairly certain we resigned from that accountancy firm to get your facts straight. It's also just occurred to me that one of the self-imposed restrictions of this save was that we weren't allowed to manage any team that had ever won the top flight. So that immediately rules out Stjarnan anyway because they have uh, won a single top flight title in 2014. It's been three weeks and not a single phone call from any of them. Do we not have phones here? Like, come on, this is just bad form. Oh, oh, dearie, 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 dearie me. Um, Liknir. <laughs> we don't even make the suitability to deliver the club's vision. Lack of experience leading teams to promotion. That's just a dig, isn't it? Blame the Uxalts board, boys. Oh, concerning. I was going to say on the plus side, there's been another sacking, but it's a team that have won 18 top flight titles. <laughs> God damn it, man. They went with this lad in the end. And I mean, he's objectively better than me, isn't he? Like, <laughs> to take nothing away from him. Although... What I would say, and I don't think I've ever seen this happen in FM before, they've just hired a guy who was the chairman at another club. Lickner, as their new manager, have just appointed the chairman of third place Kodringir. I've never seen that happen before. I didn't even think that was possible. HK also said no. Your complete lack of experience in guiding teams away from relegation. Um... Did they miss the first season of this save where that's exactly what we did? Or does it not count because technically we were in the playoff game? I think we've been harshly done by there, Brynjar. To the surprise of no one, Stjarnan said no. With no explanation, just no. And instead you want bald Vincent here. I mean, to be fair, he's only just retired as a player. But again, he's better than me. Fair enough. Okay, a potential break. We've got another job available since all the others said no. Oh dear, it's KF. Uh, semi-pro team, second tier, but they did come sixth place. Uh, no, they didn't because they are... <laughs> there's no games being played. Where did they come last season? Ah, they came newly promoted. <laughs> that, that's what they are. But this might just be up our alley. <gasps> a thing is happening. Lovely stuff. Right, okay, we've actually been invited to a job interview with a newly promoted side to the second tier who are predicted to come bottom comfortably, but... Hey, you know what? Scaled down vision for the future. I do not like the sound of that. You've just been promoted. I'd like to see a bit of ambition out of you there, lads. But nevertheless, we've, we've been in Iceland over two months now and it's getting cold. Let's do it. So incredibly, the chairperson actually has a picture. Uh, good old Alton Ern Gil... No, oh, hang on. Gilferson. Yeah, there we go. So uh, let's see what we can do, I guess. Relatively big obstacle not speaking the language. Okay, we've not encountered this before. I don't think it's... 
I can learn the language in time. Mate, it's Cali, it's Icelandic, but like, it's, it's not, you can't just, no. Fairly adept at learning languages. Let's go with that instead. You haven't had many jobs yet. Can you explain what that is? Because people keep asking me this damn question. That's why. Make up for it in other ways. Big jump from your previous club. Okay, that is a good sign that we would still be taking a massive step up, I suppose. Haven't done a great job with the media. Okay, well, we can promise to change that because then I actually will have to work on it. And broad in media controversies, come on the support of your players. Uh, I suppose we do have those problems with the uh, stupid promises. Uh, I think we can promise that too. <laughs> it's a bad idea. Yeah, no changes to the staff. What are they looking for? Minimum two-year contracts for first-team players. Wow, you're semi-professional, lads. Avoid relegation, third round minimum. So avoid relegation, basically. Where have we heard that before? It's an exciting vision. It's really not, but we're going to, you know, blow smoke up his ass anyway. Yeah, I think we can't really aim any higher than that. A transfer budget of £8,000. The fact that there even is a transfer budget is good. This might actually be the first time on any journeyman save I've ever joined a club, potentially, at the start of their season and actually have a pre-season with them. That doesn't happen. Usually I'm like, hey, look, we've got six games to go and we're screwed. I say that's realistic. What about the wage budget? Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. This is a massive step up from what we were on before. Particularly, as I had a little gander at the club squad. Most players are on amateur contracts and the rest of them, the highest paid player is on £150 a week. We'd actually have some money to build a team this season that might actually be able to do something. Now, how well that will go with terms of scouting or whatnot is a different matter, but it looks like they're willing to give us money to actually fund us to stay in this division. And I think that's all we've really, all we've ever wanted was a bit of money, Uxalt. I'm kind of, I wasn't expecting that. I figured they'd be, given what they said about scaled back objectives, I kind of figured they'd come in here and be like, hey, look, here's some shoestrings to keep us up. Of course, now that I say that, for all we know, that's still massively the lowest wage by any club in this entire division, for all we know. <laughs> Imagine that, right? Newly promoted to the second tier of Iceland. I've just resigned from a fourth tier Swedish club. I come bowling into the room and be like, if I had, I'd like you to build a new stadium for me. Mm, that's a good way of getting kicked out. Okay, that looks promising. It's actually especially important that we hear from them before the end of the year, because my suspicion is that's when contracts expire. And the last thing I want is to come into this club and find that they've let a load of their best players go because reasons. Uh, I want to make sure I can get in there and maybe extend a couple of good players contracts and also maybe prevent the extension of some bad players contracts because uh yeah that's gonna be important for finance management oh wow well goddamn i was not expecting them to be so quick with that what was that four days they are desperate 325 pound a week it's not a lot of money for us right now but i mean particularly living in iceland i don't know how we're gonna actually be able to afford to live on 325 pound a week in iceland but sure maybe they'll subsidize us a little bit but the wage budget is good the transfer budget is good I know for a fact from what I can see from looking at their squad and what I can see about the contracts that they're definitely not spending most of this. I'm tempted to not actually beat around the bush here. Get in now that we'll have as much time as physically possible to prefer, prepare, this, prepare this club for the season. Wasn't quite how I expected this episode to go, if I'm honest. But um, the concern I have as well at this point is if we don't take this job, firstly, we severely limit Callis' chances of finding Henrik because the longer time goes by, you just don't know. But also, more important than that, is the fact that they're in the off-season, which means there's very few sackings are likely to happen during the off-season, and probably won't until maybe like May or June next year, potentially, as their season will get back underway properly again at that point. And I feel like we need to get our feet under the table as soon as possible, really. And this feels like the perfect opportunity. Newly promoted side, I assume they have been in this division before at some point, but they seem to have a little bit of cash behind them, which hopefully we can use to make some serious talent recruitment, maybe. I don't know. I'm just going to go for it, I think. I don't want to ask for any more money than that because reasons, obviously. Although it would give us more job security, but I don't think I'm in a... Can I argue for the 350 maybe? I've never actually tried this before. There you go. Callie's earned himself an extra £25 a week there. I maybe could have asked for a bit more, but I like the fact that they actually said yes to that, I suppose. Shows that they're wanting to bring us in. As for tactics and stuff, uh, I don't even know if I've actually saved our tactic from... Oops, I might have to go back to an earlier version of the save and grab it out of there. <laughs> or if it just looks futile with the squad that we have, I might just build something different. We'll see. We'll see what kind of players they've got. Cali Forsberg has a brand new... I mean, he... the name of the club barely fits on the damn scarf. So I'm going to need some help. Uh, Icelanders in the comment section. Let me try this out. Let me just take a run up at this one, shall we? Natspinuf... No. Natspinufalag Felabogthar. Felabogthar? Natspinufalag Felabig... Felabigthar. Felabigthar? I don't know. Uh, if anyone could spell that phonetically for me, that would be lovely. But for the moment, it's KF. Adequate, adequate, average. That's not too bad, actually. What have they won in the past? That's two third division titles, isn't it? So it looks like they were promoted as second place uh, last year. Although they have come runner-up in the League Cup once, apparently. Oh, no. League Cup C. How many League Cups are there? Director of Football, vacant. Assistant Manager, vacant. Okay, so we're going to have to find some staff because this vacant guy is doing everything at the moment. He's probably manager as well. So we're going to make sure that we uh, take some take some of it off of his plate. Okay, good and bad news. Uh, good news, incredibly, their system actually seems to somehow mimic ours. And then the bad news is that there's only 10 players. 
That that's the bad news. I've never seen a team report that doesn't include a full squad. <laughs> This is going to be extremely interesting. <laughs> oh, this feels like more of a task than we had before. So a contract is set to expire. Have any... No <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to have to get some stuff. Have we got any staff? <laughs> Turns out I was the vacant after all. Oh, dear God. Who was running the club last year then? I'm starting to think that this might have been... No wonder there's so much money around. <laughs> They're not paying anybody. All they we're going to do is keep the lights on. So the thing is, I can't even tell you whether the players are any good or not because we... <laughs> well, we can have a look at them since there's only 10 of them. Well, since he's here, we might as well ask about Magnus uh, Snare Darbjartsson. Central midfielder. Good first touch. Passing's all right. Vision's not bad. He looks like a reasonably solid player. Good decisions, good determination. So here's the squad. Yep, good. Maybe let's look at wages, shall we? Okay, contracts. Ah! Right, okay, so he's not the highest paid player at the club, but he is one of only four players that are earning money. Okay, so the best player at the club in theory, and he even has a face pack picture, is Inglefoot Sigurdsson. And he's actually really good. Not the quickest, but bugger me. In that kind of young Dean role, behind the strikers maybe, or even playing deeper depending on what other sort of players we can get. Point is, we will find a place for Sigurdsson. Now, likes to beat opponent repeatedly with his 16 flair. Okay, cool. So he's like an Icelandic Ronaldinho. We've also got Samuel Mar Christensen, who's a centre back, six foot two, great jumping reach, tackling of nine, marking of nine, heading of six. Bravery's not great. Composure, uh, not composure, aggression's good. And then the last of the players that's actually on money here on a part-time deal is this man, Asko Johansson, who is a striker with 12 finishing, dreadful composure. Like, awful composure. But then there's also these guys who are on amateur contracts and we know nothing about them really beyond the fact that they are here. Uh, so let's have a look. Who we got? Always oh, a... Sorry? I have many questions. It's Saul Rossinha. Uh, firstly, media handling style. Evasive. You and me are going to get on well, pal. You've never played in Spain but were born there and have no Icelandic second nationality. What the hell are you doing here? Uh, so it's 23-year-old Saul Rossinha who is unfortunately a left-sided... Then again... He has nine tackling. So actually, I think left wing back with great marking as well. He is not a winger. He's very much... Oh my God, he's actually a really good wing back. Like genuinely. Training the play here. He's got nine tackling, 11 marking. Positioning's a little bit on the sus. But good crossing and dribbling. Decently quick. I think Sal Rossinha could actually be quite a good player for this team. Okay, we've also got Brecky, uh, which is important because, you know, you've got to start the day right. Torluxon, who is a centre... Yes, he's very much a centre back. He's six foot five. Six heading, seven marking, nine tackling. He's not great honestly, but he is very tall. He's basically Eric Hagenau. Literally, he's Eric Hagenau, but worse. We've got Stierkar Jökul Davidsson, another centre-back. Dreadful heading, but at least he can tackle and mark, and he actually has good aggression, and okay bravery. Egert Thorsteinsson as well. Oh my god, it's a right wing-back with five tackling, I grant you, but nevertheless, we actually have a player that's natural there. Vilhjumur Kaldal as well. Finish ah, okay. He's short, but he's quick, and he's got okay finishing and composure. We've also got, though, and I think I'm going to enjoy him. It's Huggy Johannesson. Um, and he's got great reflexes. He's the first choice keeper. Okay, he he looks all right. I'm seeing, a, I'm seeing ironically, the exact system we were playing at Uxol. Incredibly. I've never seen that before. Never be the default anyway. What about youth team, maybe? I guess we do actually have some youth team players who are all on £10 a week. And are more than the rest of the team put together, pretty much. Ah, wait, what? I am confusion. Okay, this is going to need some splaining to me. Uh, <laughs> this is going to need some serious explaining to me. We have a senior affiliate with the big boys in the top flight, and we can get loans from them, which is good. Long-term deal, share scouting knowledge. We have access to all their training facilities, which is awesome, which would explain it as well. Backroom staff. I'm so confused by this. This team is literally not allowed to get promoted. Either that or it will break the terms of the deal. But I'm fairly certain I think we might not be allowed to get promoted. So we have like a shared youth team. I think what's going to have to happen is someone who's more familiar with how this agreement works. I've never seen this on FM before. Or either that or I have and I'm just getting really confused. I don't think I've ever seen this kind of agreement on FM before. It feels to me like we have a shared youth team with our senior affiliate in some way. With it. I'm sure it's probably a lot simpler than that. I'm just misinterpreting it, but I'm definitely going to need information about what the hell's going on here. Uh, particularly if it is such that we can't get promoted. 87k in the bank. Jesus Christ on a cracker. Um, We have £4,000 a week in wage budget available. What's the betting, right? That we get a news article soon. Although I don't think we would do because the new season's... We're already in the new season. So I think we actually do have that money. I'm intrigued by this. Immensely intrigued by this.
it makes me think that we could actually build a squad out of that money. I'm extremely excited by this. Now, what else could we even look at? I mean, that's literally what we've got as far as our squad. That is the team currently. Um, but I do think it suits the style of play that we were already playing previously at Uxal incredibly. So I think we probably will go down that path. But, uh, well, okay, next episode has just got very, very more interesting because I'm going to have to rebuild this team, essentially. Uh, maximum of three non-EU players in the starting 11. That's fine. And then four lone players in the match squad. So the first thing I think we're going to do as far as... Um, we'll sign players permanently because we can actually afford to do, though. But we'll obviously max out our loan allowance as well to save ourselves some extra cash because we actually have money in the bank as well. This has been a very strange episode that I was not expecting to take that particular twist. But if you have enjoyed it, drop a like. That'd be fantastic. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'd be awesome too. In the next video, uh, it might not be until after Christmas because things are extremely hectic at the moment. So if I don't see you in another video before Christmas, then uh, thank you so much for watching over the course of the year. And I hope you have a lovely Christmas and Boxing Day or whatever holiday that you happen to celebrate that time of year as well. Yeah, we'll be back with a full transfer window episode as well, apparently. So that's going to be Pog as I try to sort out this absolute mess. And I can't wait to get stuck in, honestly. So I'll see you guys soon. Hold your gun, capybara. Bye-bye.